good morning uh, today we are discussing two topics uh, first one is the matrix element for emission and absorption and the other one is the spontaneous emission in the dipole approximation now let us first discuss about the basic matrix elements for the emission and absorption for this uh, we consider the emission and absorption of photons by non relativistic atoms atomic electrons uh, you know the interaction hamiltonian between the atomic electrons and the radiation field is assumed to be obtainable from the standard description that's momentum to p minus e over c where a is the quantized radiation field therefore we can write the hamilton interaction hamiltonian h in equals to summation over i uh, minus e over twice mc pi dot a plus a dot pi plus e square of divided by twice mc square a dot a uh, where the summation is over the various atomic electrons that participate in the interaction uh, the quantized addition field a is assumed to act in, on a photon state or a many photon state at xi where xi is the coordinate of ith electron the operator pi in pi a is differential operator uh, on atomic state but also on photon state now let us consider the absorption of uh, uh, light quantum that is photon characterized by k alpha an atom which is initially in state A. Uh, this A is different from that A, the previous A. Uh, in state A makes a radiative transition to state B. For simplicity, we assume that there are only photons of kind K alpha. If there are number of photons are n k alpha in the initial state then there are n k alpha minus one photons in the final state although a contains both a small a and a dagger but only a gives rise to non vanishing matrix element the quadratic term a dot a makes no contribution to the process so ignoring the spin magnetic moment interaction we have uh, b n k alpha minus 1 h interaction is n k alpha equals to minus e over m c and the resultant uh, is a uh, uh, description is given here or we can write minus e over a m square root of n k alpha h cross divided by twice omega v summation over i b exponential iota k x i pi dot epsilon alpha a exponential minus omega t now within the framework of semi classical theory we may define an equivalent classical vector potential denoted by a absorption such that a absorption equals to a not absorption exponential iota k x minus omega t where a not absorption is the amplitude of this classical vector potential and is given by c square root of n k alpha h cross divided by twice omega v uh, epsilon alpha according to semi classical theory the absorption probability is proportional to the intensity that is square or uh, mag magnitude of uh, amplitude while in quantum theory it is proportional to n k alpha so in this equation that is the equation number three the matrix element is linear in square root of n k alpha the semi classical theory gives the correct answer even for small values of n k alpha or for weak addition now we consider the emission of photon characterized by k alpha in this time the creation operator a dagger gives to a non vanishing matrix element since the photon occupation number is increased by one so we can write b n k alpha plus 1 h interaction a n k alpha equals to minus e over m square root of n k alpha plus 1 h cross over twice omega v summation i b exponential minus iota k dot x i p i 
डॉट एप्सलॉन अल्फा ए एक्सपोनेंशियल प्लस आयोटा ओमेगा टी इफ एन के अल्फा इज वेरी लार्ज द सेमी क्लासिकल ट्रीटमेंट इज एडिक्यूट सिंस देर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन के अल्फा प्लस वन एन स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन के अल्फा तो द लार्ज वैल्यू ऑफ एन के अल्फा द प्रॉब्लम कैन अगेन बी ट्रीटेड यूजिंग द सेमी क्लासिकल थ्योरी वाइल फॉर स्मॉल वैल्यू ऑफ एन के अल्फा द सेमी क्लासिकल डिस्क्रिप्शन फेल्स कंप्लीटली इन जनरल इन द क्लासिकल थ्योरी ए इज एन एक्सट्रीमली अपलेट पोटेंशियल दैट इन्फ्लुएंस द क्लास चार्ज पार्टिकल बट इज नॉट इन्फ्लुएंस बाय दैन ए इट्स डज नॉट चेंज एज एन एटम मेक ए रेडी टू ट्रांजिशन This description is satisfactory even within the framework of quantum theory. Whenever the occupation number is so large that the radiation field can be regarded as an inexhaustible source and sink of photons. On the other hand, for weak or no incident radiation, the classical description runs into difficulty because of the change in the radiation field brought about by the emission and absorption of a photon by a atom is quite not stable with the above limitations we may define an equivalent classical potential for emission process that a emission equals to a not emission exponential minus iota k minus omega t where a not emission is the uh, emission amplitude for the classical potential and given by c square root of n k alpha plus 1 h cross over divided uh, over twice omega v epsilon alpha uh, the a emission is no so longer linear in square root of n k alpha now to sum up starting with the quantum theory of radiation we had derived the following useful rule first one the emission or absorption of a photon by a charged particle is completely equivalent to an interaction of the charged particle with the equivalent unquantized vector potential given below a absorption equals to c square root of n k alpha h cross divided by twice omega v epsilon alpha exponential iota k x minus omega t and similarly emission can be represented by c square root of n k alpha plus 1 divided by twice omega v h cross uh, epsilon alpha exponential minus iota k x minus omega t uh, Now the second topic is the spontaneous emission in the dipole approximation. Uh, in this case of spontaneous emission, an atomic state A makes a ready to transition to stable B in the absence of any incident electromagnetic wave. In this case, the matrix element B H I dash A will be given by minus E over M. square root of h cross divided by twice omega v summation i uh, b exponential minus iota k x i p i epsilon alpha a in a typical atomic transition in the optical region the wavelength of the emitted photon is much greater than the linear dimension of the atom uh, the wavelength of the photon is lambda cross uh, is defined by 1 over k and which is very very little than the radius of the atom this mean that we can replace exponential minus iota k x on by the using the exponential by the extension of that function 1 minus iota k dot x i minus k dot x i square divided by 2 and so on um, by its leading term first then we have the matrix element of e or mc epsilon alpha dot p is larger than that of e h cross divided by twice mc sigma i k cross epsilon alpha an approximation in which only the epsilon alpha dot p i term is kept is called the electric dipole that is a1 approximation for simplification we assume that only one of the atomic electrons participate in spontaneous emission so the transition probability per unit time into a solid element d omega will be given by omega d omega e square omega over 8 pi cube m square h cross c cube 
and the magnitude square to omega. The matrix element B P A will be written as a b iota m upon h cross h naught x a or that is equal to iota m upon h cross e b minus e a b x a or it can be written as iota m omega x p a uh, since the angular momentum selection rule for e1 that is the electric dipole j b minus j a magnitude is either 1 or 0 Uh, we also consider the parity selection rule the parity change yes to prove this nearly not that bx equals to minus b pi inverse x pi a or minus pi b pi a bx a where pi a and pi b are the operator uh, and stand for the parity operator for a and b state respectively uh, therefore the equation 4 can be written as uh, omega d omega e square omega q weight pi square h cross c q x b square cos square theta alpha d omega where the angle theta alpha is defined as cos of theta alpha equals to x b a dot epsilon alpha upon x p a and the x p a is defined as the uh, x p a square plus y b a square plus z b a square where x y and z are the coordinates. Now the integrated transition probability for the spontaneous emission is omega equals to integration over the omega d omega t omega or that will be e square omega q upon 3 pi h cross c q x v a square uh, in order to compute the mean lifetime tau to state a we must sum the transition probability into the all possible final state allowed by the selection rule and energy conservation um, and hence we get 1 over tau a equals to summation or i a omega from a to b i and now let us consider an example in which the mean lifetime of a radiative even transition from the state having the quantum number n l and m to the state having the quantum number n dash l dash m dash uh, where m dash is given by uh, it, it, i am m plus minus 1 uh, we can write summation over m dash omega n l m to n dash l dash m dash that is equals to e square omega q over 3 pi s cross c q uh, l plus 1 twice l divided by twice l plus 1 and l divided by twice l plus 1 and integration over from 0 to infinity r n dash l dash r n l r q t r where r n l is the normalized radial wave function of a hydrogen like atom characterized by an, an L. Similarly R n dash L dash is the normalized radial wave function of a hydrogen like atom characterized by n dash L dash. Now from this equation it is clear that the lifetime is independent of M. Well, in general because the lifetime of an isolated state is independent of its M values in computing the lifetime we can either sum over just the final magnitude quantum numbers for a fixed initial magnetic quantum number or sum over um, both the initial and final magnetic quantum numbers and divide by the multiplicity of the initial state that is summation over m dash thanks to 1 over twice j plus 1 summation over m dash and summation over m where m j is the angular momentum of the decaying state that is a occasionally the symmetry of the atomic state may be such that the electric dipole emission of a photon is forbidden this occurs when x b a equals to zero it is then necessary to take seriously the term k dot x in this case the matrix element will be given by b k dot x epsilon alpha dot p a equals to 1 by 2 b k dot x epsilon alpha p plus k dot p epsilon alpha dot x a plus half b k dot x epsilon alpha p minus k dot p epsilon alpha x a the first term can be written as uh, 1 by 2 k dot x p plus 
xp plus px dot epsilon alpha where xp plus px is a symmetric dyadic the radiative transition due to the term is known as the electric quadrupole e2 transition since xp plus px is equal to iota m over h cross h0 h0 xx and k by 2 dot b xp plus px a dot epsilon alpha equals to minus iota m omega divided by 2 k dot b x x a epsilon alpha now the wigner ricard theorem follows that the selection for the angular momentum uh, for e2 transition is uh, the jb minus j a less than equal to 2 a or less than equal to jb plus j the second term in equation 18 can be written as k dot x epsilon alpha p minus k dot p epsilon alpha x equals to k x epsilon alpha x cross p where k x alpha k x epsilon alpha is corresponding to the plane wave expansion of the magnetic field b while x cross p is just the orbital angular momentum operator of the atomic electron hence the radio trans radio to transition due to this term is called a magnetic dipole m1 transition the angular momentum selection rule for a magnetic dipole transition is jb minus j Ma magnitude of jb minus j less than equal to 1 same as in the electric dipole radiation transition thank you